Another one of the important steps in regulating a piano, um, at least in vertical pianos, is adjusting what's called lost motion, or sometimes it's called jack gap. Um, and what that is is the amount of hammer movement, or, or I'm sorry, the amount of key movement that takes place before it engages the, um, the hammer butt and, of course, the hammer assembly. Um, and uh, so what, uh, what you want to have is um, as little motion as possible, but you still want a slight, slight amount um, of uh, gap between the top of the jack and the bottom of the hammer butt. Now, uh, we're going to show you some examples of, uh, again, too much um, hammer or jack gap um, or too much lost motion, um, and then also not enough lost motion or not enough jack gap, and then one that's adjusted correctly. Okay, we're going to start over here with the middle C. Now, the, one, the, one, the thing that you want to look at um, to see if it needs to be adjusted is when you start to push the key down, you're going to watch the top of this back check, okay, and what that's going to do, that should move just a slight amount before it uh, makes the hammer butt move, okay, right here is the hammer butt, right here is the, is the back check, okay, so watching that is going to tell you how much that, that whippin is actually moving before it engages the hammer butt. Now, this first example I'm going to show you is, um, is a hammer or a key that has too much um, lost motion, excess lost motion, which uh, essentially is, is um, making it so you have inefficiency in your key and you're going to have a lot of lost um, uh, energy. So as you can see, when I push this down, this is how much the, the uh, back check can move before it starts to engage the hammer. If I go further than that, then the hammer starts to move, okay, or the, back, or the um, catcher, I should say. But um, as you can see, this, this might not look like much to you, but um, that, that's an excessive amount. Um, okay, now if I go to the one right next to it, okay, this one, if you watch this, um, this key right here, okay, you can see it move just a little bit. It just winks before it engages the hammer. Okay, so that, that's a pretty good amount right there. It just starts to move just a little bit, but there is a little bit of movement before um, the hammer starts to move. Okay, and again, just watching the difference between the back check moving and the catcher moving. That's that's really a, a good good watch way to watch. Um, now, when, as we go over here, this one right here, if you watch that one, okay, I really can't make the the key move at all before the hammer starts moving. Okay, and as you can see, that uh, just has no jack gap or no lost motion there. Okay, and it should have a, just a tiny bit to this we showed showed you over in this this example over here. Okay, and another way you can check that. Okay, if you want to know if there's little or no, um, uh, if there's no or x not enough lost motion, is if you watch the the backs of the hammers. And if we pull back on this hammer rail just a little bit, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it from back here between the hammers, but uh, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but most of the hammers are moving except for uh, one. If you watch this one right here, okay, I'm going to do it again, okay, all the hammers move except for that one, which means um, it, that hammer isn't able to fall back at all before it uh, touches the jack, it means the top of the jack is already in contact with that hammer butt, so there's no gap there. So that one right there would need to be adjusted. Now the way that you adjust it, um, I pulled the key out so you can see it better. This is the, this is the uh, a key, and then we go back to the end of it, and this is called the capstan. There are different types of capstans. This is, um, this is a square capstan. Uh, if we turn it around, you can see that uh, it's it's round on the top, but this portion right here is square. Okay, and so we're going to use a square uh, capstan wrench. Uh, this one here happens to have uh, both sizes because uh, that square can be, on some pianos, can be larger or smaller depending on uh, the piano. But um, this one has um, a smaller end 
and a larger square end. Okay, and this, um, this the larger square end fits um, this capstan wrench. So the way you adjust it is, um, you know, obviously you want to raise or lower that, and it's uh, got a threaded screw here. So to raise it, um, you're actually going to turn the screw counterclockwise, and that's going to raise it up. Okay, now if you have, um, obviously if you have too much lost motion, like in this one, you're going to want to raise that because you want that capstan to push the whipping up so that the top of the jack is closer to the um, to the bottom of the hammer butt. Okay, so you want to raise it by turning the capstan counterclockwise. Okay, if if you have uh, not enough lost motion like we had over in even this example here, you're actually going to turn the capstan screw clockwise. Okay, so that it goes down, which is going to actually lower the whipping just a slight amount to give a little bit of uh, gap between the top of that jack and the bottom of the hammer butt. Okay, so that's um, that's the way you adjust it. Now there are different types of capstans. Um, I'm going to show you uh, another one on, on larger uprights, um, studio pianos and, and uh, uprights, uh, um, larger uprights, they will have a wood capstan and uh, even some smaller ones will have a capstan with holes in it. Okay, and what those what you can do to adjust those holes um, is use a, a tool like this, a capstan regulator, and uh, you put the, the end of the tool, and you can use this one, it's got um, a bent end and then a straight end just to be able to get different angles on the, but what you'll do is put that in there and then you can turn it one way or the other depending on, uh, again, you would turn it to the left if you want it, you want to lower it, you would turn it to the right if you wanted to raise it. Um, so that's one. Here's another version of the capstan screw wrench, um, the pointed one, uh, for those um, capstans that have holes in them. Um, we also have uh, available what's called the universal capstan regulator. Okay, it has one on the end with a pointed tool, and then uh, one like this which has graduated areas to, sh to fit different size sizes of square uh, capstans. So um, that's the universal capstan regulator. Okay, so um, some different tools to accomplish the same job, but um, that's, the, that's the procedure that you go through to uh, make adjustments to the, to the um, lost motion or what they call sometimes jack gap.